What up amigos, today we're doing something very different. Uh, we're looking at yeast, and also I'm not drinking. Not that I've stopped drinking, I mean I accidentally drank vodka for breakfast, but I thought it was water and it worked me out really quickly. But I'm just not drinking right now because it's the middle of the day and I'm doing this video and we're gonna be looking at what yeast does. And yeast is relevant to drinking. It does make bread, that's what baker's yeast is good for, but it also makes spirits, beers, and of course, Vegemite. Who doesn't love Vegemite? I mean, I'm guessing most people don't like Vegemite, but I'm Australian, so I do like Vegemite. Now, I keep three yeasts on hand. We've got our Steel Spirits Classic 8 Turbo, our Low and Premium Baker's Yeast, and the Lelvin EC 1118. These are pretty stock standard yeasts. Uh, this one will do up to about 20% before it kicks it. Baker's yeasts vary, but they'll normally do 8 to 10%, and the EC 1118 will do about 18%. Now, what happens is the yeast gets drunk and dies. Essentially, yeast will eat any sugar you give it, natural or artificial. It'll fart CO2 and it'll produce alcohol and it gives up its life. It drinks till it dies to, to make us the happy juice. It's, it's great, we should respect that a lot more. Now, different yeasts uh, reproduce and uh, consume sugar at different rates, which is why this one they call a turbo yeast. But I mean, there's cost efficiencies to each of them as well. So we're gonna have a quick look at them. Um, in short, turbo yeast, you pay $8.95 for a little 240 gram bag, or you can call that $37.29 per kilo, which is pretty bloody good. That's from Beer Co, where I get a lot of stuff from. Uh, you've then also, that's got nutrients already mixed into it, as you can kind of tell from the kind of mixed medium there. Uh, then on the other hand, you just got this cheapo baker's yeast, which I get from the local shop, it looks like. Uh, so all your yeasts, you should keep it about four degrees, so I keep them in the fridge. Uh, that one costs $4.20 per uh, 280 grams, or 15 bucks a kilo. You've then got your triple one eight, you normally get those in little bags, but you can buy it in bulk packs, and that works out to, where is that on my little chart here? $95.90 per kilo. So that's actually the most expensive, but that's really good for wines and champagnes apparently. Now to even it out as well, you've then got Fermade. So this is uh, diammonium phosphate, but this is a organic variant. And it's normally like 95 bucks a kilo, but I saw the iBrew have it listed for $13.50 for 2.5 kilos. I don't know if that's a typo. Uh, and I think their mail orders are offline right now due to whatever's going on in the world. But that would probably be worth it. As soon as it's available again, I'd recommend getting that because that is they've, they've stuffed up the price and they have to have. But we're gonna look at these and see how they perform. And I'll shorten it down where I have to. Is this still recording? Yeah, apparently. It's not giving me a little timer though. Yeah, oh, there we go. I'm just blind as all hell. All right, so what we've got then is 10 grams of each of our three yeasts, which I've allowed to naturally come up to room temperature here. And the reason you do that is you don't want to shock the yeast by jumping all the way up to a decent temperature. Now anywhere between 30, 35 degrees is pretty good. Right now, ambient, it is about 28 degrees. And I've got some water sitting here as well, which is I've brought up to 32 degrees, because it does like that little bit of heat to kind of get things progressing. So first off, let's dump each of these in one of these little containers. That's the turbo. That's the bakers. Oh, nearly stuffed that up, didn't I? That's the EC triple one eight. Now I've pretty much always stuck to EC triple one eight, even for my beers, uh, which is a bit of overkill. Like you really only need bakers yeast for beer, but I've just always used the expensive one because I'm a moron, I guess. Uh, then what we're going to do? I'm going to dump 200 mils of water in each one. This is all from the same jar, so we know that each one is getting the same temperature of water. And I'm using my fancy little beaker, so each one's getting the right amount. Water. Oh, this is, I really should have used bigger containers. Uh, these are gonna bloom and produce a mess. I'm very certain. That actually looks like the turbo yeast is already going somehow. I'm not sure how. Bakers. C triple one eight. That is that is too much liquid. So let's angle the camera down a little bit for you. In fact, we had to get right up close in these. 
and watch this weird ass action that they do as they ferment. Uh, they kind of fly all over the chocolates. Just give these a quick mix up. Bit of cross contamination, never hurt anyone. I mean, that is so very wrong. It really does hurt people. But not in this sense. Mm, that's a bit stuck in there, isn't it? All right, so be it. Ooh, look at that one, frothy. Now, yeah, let's move these out of the way in case it does get a bit messier than we planned. And watch how it goes. Turns out I'm a Muppet. I meant to add. All right, for some reason the video just cut out. I'm not sure which video is at. But what I just did is I put one metric teaspoon of sugar into each of those because I meant to put it in the water before and completely forgot. So that's gonna make some happy little yeasticles there. We'll see how that goes now. It should start blooming pretty quickly, especially with this ambient kind of 30 degree temperature. Now, I can see already that the EC 118 is blooming pretty hard. You can even see the yeast uh, kind of launching like it's blowing out little gas pockets. Let's make sure it's all had a good chance to mix in. So there's a few bits stuck at the bottom that I can see. Bake his yeast, it's clumped up a little bit. Make sure they're all aerated too. Yeast actually loves oxygen. And it likes a slightly acidic environment too. And you can see there's a fair bit has mixed in here. 200ml of water might not be enough, but it should be plenty for the sake of this demonstration. So let's make sure it has absorbed what it can. Bit of a better angle on this too. Alrighty, a few splashes there. Now let's keep an eye on it and see how it goes for the next few more minutes. All right, that baker's yeast is going. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna half each of these. I'm gonna dump 100 ml out into another jar. Give them a bit, oh, you can see there's a fair bit there that's just, just not soaking up, I don't know why. 100 ml into another jar, give them a bit more headroom. Woo. Oh. Oh, sloppy. Keep going, then we'll also have this abomination to have a look at afterwards. Let's see what it looks like. Um, gonna give this turbo uh, probably a, a good shake actually. Let's cover it with my hand. Oh, it's gonna be bad. Shake the living hell out of it. Hopefully, 
that dissolves a bit more, but it's really is a bit of a strange one, isn't it? They say with the turbo yeast though, to actually use quite a bit. I use 10 grams of each of these, and they say to just use 60 grams for like a 20 litre. Um, so you're making you know some sort of spirit. The recommendation is 60 to 120 grams, which is a lot compared to this. You can imagine how crazy that would go. So we'll give this a bit more. We'll see how their bloom goes. You can see there is a bit of CO2 being produced by the turbo yeast. Uh, but if the other two, let's say the EC and the baker's yeast bloom gets to the head again, we're actually going to dump some more turbo yeast in and just give it that extra oomph. Uh, see what happens. All right, let's keep watching. Now look at these little plumes of yeast going on. It's pretty awesome to see. All right, that baker's yeast is going mental. That is really good. I don't know what's going on with this um, turbo yeast. I'm literally just going to dump uh, more, a lot more. See how that goes. I will give it a bit longer. Uh, if it starts to overflow, I'll pull the baker's yeast out of the race. We know who comes first here. But uh, it's certainly interesting. Like, baker's yeast, if you've got a good one or if you're I mean, if you're doing it right, you can probably get it up to about 12%. These other two, being between 18 and 20%, neither here nor there, but the, the Lelvin EC 1118 is definitely blooming a lot harder. Um, it, and this has nutrient mixed in with it, so you'd think it does well. Well, let's let it keep going a bit. See who comes in second place. I think it'll be the 1118, but let's keep an eye on it and see what happens. All right, I think that's definitely the winner. That's definitely second place. Have a look at this monster. This is a, our mix. Oh, it's a bit close, isn't it? Let's zoom out. That's uh, definitely kicking off. But what I also did here, I had a fourth contender going. And this one is five grams of baker's yeast, but I also put some uh, fermate in it, or the diamonium phosphate, which is a nutrient booster. And you can see it 
Five grams. I guess it's performed better than the EC Triple One Eight. It's performed nearly as well as ten grams of Baker's yeast. The head on it is a bit less dense. There is a, a difference there, um, but I I don't know what's going on with this turbo yeast. I really don't. It's it's just not much happening there. Now this is meant to ferment in forty eight hours. No idea how, but that's what it says to do. Uh, and then run 48 hours, boom, alcohol 20%, something like that. So I don't know which is best, but I mean, realistically, if you look at the cost, uh, you're gonna have to use twice as much as this, or you get half the yield with this if you're using it for booze, but this is also multi-use. So say you use twice as much, you're still looking at 30 bucks per, uh, or two kilos at that point, but kilo equivalent of getting, say, something like the turbo yeast which obviously isn't performing very well for some reason, which I don't fully fathom. Uh, the Lelvin EC eight is definitely good. I'm not sure if there's gonna be much of a flavor difference between these two if you were to use them to make uh, a drink out of. I'd assume so, but then you're gonna double distill it and filter it and everything like that anyway. So that one I should be pointing at. Um, bang for buck wise, looking at the EC one eight, it really isn't cost effective. So I don't know if I will continue getting it. I'd say either this with a Fermaid mixed in or just turbo yeast, like 37.29 for a kilo of that, if it will ever do its thing, is great. But for now, I'm gonna mix these together and chuck them in a brew and see what I can knock up. Uh, definitely let us know your thoughts if you have a preference on your own yeast that you use. If you have, you know, if you use the other Fermaid, like Fermaid AT or whatever it's called, um, Whatever you do differently, let me know and what you use it for, whether you are making some weird food thing, bread, beer, spirits. I'll be curious and uh, looking forward to hearing it. Till then, hit the little dingleberry down there if you haven't already to get notifications. Hit the red button if it's red to subscribe. Or don't. Uh, or do. Whatever suits you. I'm past the point of caring. It's a Sunday afternoon. I've started drinking. I'm going to crack a beer now because it's bloody hot. But I hope you enjoyed. I'm very curious about your own, ooh, look at that one go, your own yeast recommendations. Till next time, have a ripper weekend. See ya.